following is a paid program for Passionist Communications. Welcome everyone to our celebration of the Sunday Mass today, a ministry of the Passionist community. My name is Father Paul. It is September 10th, the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our Mass today is a sponsored Mass. Our sponsor is Margot O'Brien and her family, and their special intention is Thomas D. O'Brien, so please keep them in your prayers. Our presider today is Father Edward Beck from our Passionist community in Pelham, New York. If you have your prayer guide, take it out, turn to the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time, and let us begin our celebration. Joyful, joyful, we adore you, God of glory, Lord of love, our Son, for thy flowers before you, Son above, let the clouds of sin and sadness drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And welcome to the celebration of the Eucharist, a time when we center our hearts and our minds on the presence of God in our lives and indeed in our faith community. So confident in the loving mercy of that God, let us recall the ways we have not responded fully to the invitation to love. Lord Jesus, you call us to forgive. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you say where two or three are gathered in your name, you are there. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you proclaim a world called to peace and justice. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom in an everlasting inheritance through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, you, son of man, I have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, O oh, wicked one, you shall surely die. And you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way, the wicked shall die for his guilt, but I will hold you responsible for his death. But if you warn the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yourself. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. 
Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commitment, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commitment there may be, are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor. Hence, love is the fulfillment of the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, Take one or two others along with you so that every fact may be established on the testimony of the two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The author Margaret Wheatley tells the story of taking a tour of Robbins Island prison in South Africa. Now, perhaps you have heard of Robbins Island. It's the famed prison where Nelson Mandela was imprisoned for 17 of his 24 years that he was incarcerated. Mandela was in this prison. And many others who were imprisoned because of apartheid, because of resisting that oppressive structure, 
were imprisoned in Robbins Island. It is now, by the way, a UNESCO center. It is no longer a prison. But Margaret says she's taking the tour and the tour guide came to this huge cell in the prison that they used to house about 20 inmates at a time. And there was just a concrete floor. There were no cots in the room, even when the inmates were in there, nothing on the walls, just a thin sliver of window where light came through. And the tour guide in describing the cell suddenly said, and I was a prisoner in this cell. And all of those on the tour were taken aback that the man giving the tour had actually been there as a prisoner. And he paused for a moment and then he said, and to pass the time and to stay sane, we used to teach each other ballroom dancing. And when I heard that story, at first it struck me as so unusual and then it made total sense to me that in oppressive situations, no matter how we can, we come together as a community. We interact with each other. We hold each other. We show each other. We accompany each other. We're not meant to be alone. We're not meant for solitary confinement. We are built in our very DNA to be interconnected. I think that's what today's Gospel of Matthew is getting at. It begins by talking about if you wrong someone, if you commit sin, what is the path to forgiveness? The implication is it's never just a private sin. It always affects the community. There is no private sin. If you look at the Ten Commandments, every one of them is based on the assumption that this is for a community of faith because you're interconnected. So yeah, you ask forgiveness from the person against whom you sinned, but also the community, especially if that person doesn't receive it, then the church, because it's interconnected. We are built that way. And very explicitly in this gospel, Jesus says, where two or three are gathered in my name, in other words, a community, there I am in their midst. Those prayers I listen to. Not that we can't pray alone, but we're built to do it in community. Why else do you tune in to be with us? You could be praying alone in your room. You can't get to mass. We can't give you communion, unfortunately, through the television screen or through the computer. Yet you feel like you are connected to a community of faith. We are joining in prayer with you because that's what we're called to do. That's who we are. And so even if you're feeling isolated and alone right now, maybe you are homebound, or you're in a hospital, a nursing home, or maybe you are in prison. Maybe you're watching this mass today from your cell. Don't lose that spirit and that sense of interconnectedness, of realizing that we are in this together. We are responsible for one another. We are the ones who can build up one another especially in those low periods, those low moments, that God is with us in a special way when we realize that interconnectedness, when we take the time and the patience to, yeah, even teach one another to dance, to sing, to cope. We walk the journey together. Today, the gospel reminds us of that. Let's not forget it. Let us pray with confidence to God whose faithfulness endures forever. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Pope Francis and all the leaders of the church, that they will always listen to God's voice and proclaim the gospel with power and hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in thanksgiving for the sponsor of this Mass today, Margot O'Brien and family. And we remember their special intention for this Mass, Thomas O'Brien. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for the intentions of our benefactors, 
the intentions of our television parishioners that will be placed next to the altar and for Gil Vasquez, for whom we pray in a special way at this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, fill our days with your living hope. Hear our prayers and find those in our hearts. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Pray, sisters and brothers, that these, our gifts of bread and wine, may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all the Holy Church. Let us pray. Loving God, we bring you these gifts, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. We ask you to bless them in your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Your lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Nicholas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 We join now the prayer of Jesus as we say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven. heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but rather on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with each of you. And as we share peace here at Immaculate Conception, we extend it to you wherever you are joining us to celebrate today. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. Grant us, O Lord, peace in our days, peace in our hearts, peace in our families, peace in our country, peace among nations. Make our lives a prayer of peace for the world. Help us act in justice and to love tenderly and to walk humbly with our God. And 
to seek forgiveness. Help us rid ourselves of pride. Grant us, O Lord, peace in our days, peace in our hearts, peace in our families, peace in our country. Make our lives a prayer of peace for the world. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life, through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to and thank you for joining us today for our celebration of the Sunday Mass. Uh, we are most grateful to Margot O'Brien and her family for sponsoring our Mass today. And please uh, know that we will continue to keep Thomas uh, in our prayers. We're also grateful to Father Edward, to the students of the seventh grade from Immaculate Conception Catholic Academy, and some of our friends both from Immaculate Conception Parish and St. Nicholas of Tallentine Parish for being with us today and helping us to celebrate. Tomorrow is the 16th anniversary of September 11th, and so we'd like to say to the families and friends of those who were lost uh, that we continue to keep you and your loved ones whom you lost in our prayers. Uh, this Thursday is the Feast of the Exaltation of the Cross, a very important fe feast for us as Passionists, but also for the Church. And so, on Thursday, if you could remember us passionists in your prayers, we would be very grateful. Have a great week, everyone, and until we meet again next Sunday, may the passion of Jesus Christ be always in your heart. Proceeding was a paid program for Passionist Communications.